topic this morning is, is Miss Michelle Lee. She's a master student and she's going to talk about new wheat fertility products. So, Michelle, if you want this, let me know. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Can, can everybody hear me okay? Just like this? Can everybody hear Michelle okay? No? No. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> Okay. Do I just press the button? Can you talk into it? I sound louder? Can you hear me now? Alright. Okay, so welcome. My name is Michelle Lee. Um, I just finished my first year as a master's student and I've worked here at the station for four years now. Um, so here I'm going to talk to you about the study that we're working on in collaboration with a company called Anuvia. Um, some of you may have heard of them or um, their product, Syntrax. Um, they produce effi um, enhanced efficiency fertilizers, and those are good for improving yield and um, increasing availability of nutrients and reducing loss of nutrients to the soil. Um, they have um, more research with these products on corn and soybeans. So what we're trying to do is do some research for them on uh, small grains with these new e EEFs. Um, so in small grains production, um, nitrogen use efficiency is extremely important, as you know, and, and just like in the last talk, um, taking those nit nitrogen management um, decisions into account. Um, but this study is mostly about sulfur and what we know about sulfur and nitrogen is that you need sufficient amount of sulfur for maximum nitrogen response. So um, the aim of this study was to um, evaluate the effects of our sulfur rates and the timing on tiller density, which is closely correlated with yield. So what we did is we planted um, Liberty 5658, which um, is a variety you might know by Dr. Griffey. Um, medium maturity, broadly adapted variety. Um, we had 10 treatments, and what we did is we had different application times. One was at plant, one at a December application, and then one in a uh, split application. And we have our control. We have two controls for at the plant, which had no sulfur. And then we had ammonium sulfate, which is kind of a normal sulfur um, source that most of you may know of. And then it's the Simtrax products, the 10% and 20%. And we use MAP for our phosphorus, potash for our uh, potassium and ESN, which is environmentally smart nitrogen to supplement the ratios so that we had equal amounts of NPK and that way only the sulfur varied. Um, we took tiller counts in December and in February, and we also did aerial imaging four times. So um, there should be a little sheet that Joseph passed out with some of the data that is kind of just preliminary data. It's the first year that we've done this, so um, there hasn't really been any statistical analysis on it yet or anything like that. Um, but you can already see some differences in the um, application times. So at plant is really when you see um, more tillers occurring and it also showed that in the NDVI. Um, later on it started to kind of equal out and um, show the same NDVIs. So that's, I have the same little form here. Um, so you can see that obviously the control, there wasn't as much um, tillering or tiller density from the NDVI um, imaging. And then um, ammonium sulfate was um, coming in a little bit above that. And then our Simtrax products um, were higher, especially the at plant application ones um, overall until you get into like February and March and everything started kind of equal out in the imaging, mostly because um, we applied another rate of um, nitrogen and everything kind of greened up. So it'll be interesting to see once um, we harvest all this and we can get some of the yield data back. 
and be able to evaluate and do the statistical analysis as well. So yeah, we're looking forward to seeing what next year holds for this study.